Hi, I'm Dan Digico. Um, I'm still here in the office this week, um, but by now we might be all at home when you're watching this. Uh, you might be at home off tour, um, out of theatre, you know, grounded, in isolation, whatever it is. I hope you're staying well. Um, we want to take some of this downtime that you have to try and help you guys. So uh, if you need training, uh, you know, one of sales presentations, some specific product training or whatever it might be, we are here to help. So, you know, feel free to comment on this video or reach out to us and uh, tell us what we can do to help you. You know, it, it didn't, doesn't have to be dead time. Um, this is time to, to maybe brush up on some training um, and, and learn something new. So I'm going to do a little presentation here on quantum technology. Uh, I've got a little video I made to sort of introduce you to the concepts and, and what it's about. Uh, and a short PowerPoint you know, presentation just to run through a little bit more detail maybe and show you some screenshots and bits about uh, the, the, the quantum software. Um, we've got our quantum 338 here, which of course is based around the technology that I'm going to show you now. Um, so yeah, we're going to you know, see what we can do and uh, I hope you enjoy. So on with the video. In 2018, Digico shipped the first in its next generation of digital consoles, the Quantum 7. Available as a new console or as an engine upgrade to our industry-leading SD7, Digico's quantum processing raised the bar for channel count and features. With up to 256 input channels, 128 buses and a 48 by 48 matrix, all with full processing at either 48 or 96K, the Quantum 7 quickly became a standard on tour riders. And in January this year, Digico launched the next generation of Quantum consoles. The Quantum 5, again available as an upgrade to the SD5, improving the longevity of Digico hardware. And the first Quantum console built from the ground up, the Quantum 338. But with all this talk of quantum processing, what exactly does it mean? All the Digico Quantum engines use the latest 7th generation FPGAs. Since the launch of SD7 13 years ago, our FPGA designs have delivered unrivaled processing power and flexibility. And with a move to newer silicon and combining the power of multiple FPGAs on a single engine board, our quantum consoles offer engineers a unique set of tools. There are four main features that set the quantum range apart from the SD range, so let's take a quick look at each of them in turn. First up, nodal processing. This additional processing feature provides additional channel processing, the full Digico EQ Dynamics and Channel Package, including Dynamic EQ and Multiband Dynamics, which you can insert on individual AUX sends. It was clear that today's artists were demanding individually tailored monitor mixes, and previously this would have meant duplicating channels with different processing on each. But with nodal processing, a single input channel can be used for multiple artists. Simply attach EQ and Dynamics to each separate AUX send of the channel and each musician can have their own personalised mix of that input. Next up is Mustard Processing. Mustard is another additional channel processing option that adds a second set of EQ and Dynamics to a channel and consists of three sections, an input tube preamp processor, an EQ module and a dynamic section. On a channel-by-channel -channel basis, you can choose where in the signal path you want to use it, and with five positions available, you can shape your sound in many different ways. The characteristics of the mustard channel strip are quite different to the standard SD options, and provide a more boutique-style modelled option, as well as specialist tools like all-pass filters. Don't forget, you can use mustard processing on any channel type, including buses. Continuing on the specialist tools theme, the third quantum feature is our spice rack. Spice Rack provides a rack of plug-in style options that can be inserted and used on any channel on the console. The first option released for the Spice Rack is Chili 6, a 6-band dynamic processor. It comes complete with presets to help you get you started and incorporates unique release shape control. If you need info on these extra features, check out our other in-depth videos on the YouTube channel. And the final feature I'll talk about today is True Solo. This handy function allows monitor engineers to solo an input channel, then listen to that channel with the output processing applied. Now you really can listen to any input on your solo bus and hear it exactly as your artists hear it with all of its output processing. Digico always listens to its users, their needs and wants, and the Quantum platform delivers tools and mix functions that you've been asking for. For more videos, head over to our YouTube channel now. 
So, uh, I hope that was interesting. Um, a bit more of me in, a, in another format. Um, we're going to flip over to PowerPoint now, and I'm going to run some slides uh, and, and talk to you about those. Let's have a quick look. So, uh, all about the quantum engine, really. So, SD, um, back in 2007, uh, based around an FPGA-based engine. Um, and what we're doing with quantum is we're sort of bringing that more up to date with a newer generation of FPGA, uh, seventh generation um, chips now. And with the quantum engine, we have multiple FPGAs, which gives us you know, much more processing power um, and the ability to do some new cool functions you've seen on the on the on the video there, you know some new software features which, which weren't possible uh, previously on the the SD FPGA engine. So uh, when Quantum Seven came out, um, it was available as an engine upgrade. So this is an entire engine block which can be uh, transplanted into your standard SD Seven uh, console. You obviously need two Quantum Seven engines for your um, SD Seven to to transform it. Uh, nice view of the back here. Um, double optical loop. Um, so the ability for 28 of our racks to be supported, um, 8 MADI ports which be, can be configured as eight, uh, 8 ports at 48k or 4 redundant ports at 48k. At 96k we need to use all 8 to give us the 4 full MADI streams. Um, it's got a 4 port network switch built in, it's got a UV MADI built in. Um, and then there's two DMI slots at the bottom, so we have a wide range of these expansion slots. Um, for, for expanding the I.O., you know, whether it's Dante or the new Clang DMI card, we've got the Hydra 2 card fitted to this engine, and um, it's AES, MIC analog, there's lots of different options available for this. Um, the Auto Mix card, which, um, which, is, a, which is a great tool for, uh, for lots of applications. So, you know, this is uh, a great way of bringing new life to an existing work surface. Uh, we've also brought this for the SD5, which becomes the Quantum 5. Um, again, adding channels and these, you know, these cool processing features that, that we're going to talk about. Um, and of course, the Quantum 33A is the first console we've designed from the ground up just to be a quantum console. And it has some other new technology inside it. And it's worth checking out on our website and seeing all about what we do there as well. You know, with the bigger screens, capacitive touch, um, the 70 individual TFT displays we can use for channel metering and for macro buttons. So there's lots of new technology in there and of course it has the 32-bit I.O. built into the back of it. Um, but you know a lot of this power again you know is brought to us because we have this new design of engine with the multiple FPGAs and the faster PCs and the, the, the developments we're making. So Nodal processing, a uh, quantum software feature that allows us, as I said, to insert a full strip, that's uh, full dynamics and full EQ, onto individual aux ends on individual channels. So if you have a vocal channel and different members of the band would like different mixes of it, um, rather than you know splitting channels and using the same input of lots of channels and doing different mixes that way, the ability to dial in different EQ curves or different processing on individual aux ends is a really cool, efficient way of working and, you know, uh, will ultimately, yeah, make workflow more efficient and, um, and a bit more powerful, really. Uh, it's not just for monitors. I was chatting to a guy earlier today and he said, actually, for front of house, um, if you've got your auxes going to effects and you want to treat different effects differently, um, you could use exactly the same function um, and take, you know, a, a vocal sound and filter it and process it before sending it to an effect which is fed by an aux. So this is not just for monitor engineers, it's actually you know a pretty good tool for, for lots of other applications as well. Um, the true solo function again this is you know this was intended as a monitor function a monitor function primarily but we'll find other applications. Um, one of the challenges as a monitor guy is if you're listening to someone's output you have an aux maybe an aux master soloed. When you solo an input channel you don't hear any output processing. So actually you're not truly listening to that input as the artist would hear it. So as the name suggests, True Solo um, is a way of listening to any input channel soloed and temporarily applying the output processing from a given aux. So you could solo a vocal and uh, select in the True Solo panel the uh, output bus that feeds the, the vocal in-ears. Um, and then as you work on the input channel um, with it soloed, you are actually truly listening to it as the vocalist would hear it. So, you know, again, it's a great tool that gets you closer to, you know, perfecting your mix and, and maybe having better mixes. So that's true solo. Um, 
flexible orcs and insert positions. Um, it's an expansion over what we could do on SD, and we've introduced um, more positions within the channel strip where you can um, insert uh, auxes. So, you know, a bit more flexibility about how you build your signal chain and, um, and how you derive those, those aux mixes, mixes from the channels. Mustard processing. Um, this is a set of additional uh, processing options to use on channels, input channels or output channels. You can't have it on everything, but you get to pick and choose where you use it. So again, we have this flexibility of where in the channel we can place processing. Um, and again, the mustard is part of that process, so we can choose where within our channel strip we, we can insert our mustard processing. It is not a replacement for your SD processing strip, it is an additional uh, piece of processing. Um, and you can, you know, as I say, you can, you can put it on input channels, output channels, mono stereo, um, quite a lot of flexibility. And it consists of three sections really. The top section is a preamp tube emulation. Um, and there are two versions of it. Uh, there's a sort of the simple version, which has a single drive control, and then a choice of you know, the harmonics that we want to take advantage of, I suppose, uh, which are going to give us varying uh, levels of distortion um, and, and, uh, and processing, if you like. So uh, a nice simple control, select your uh, harmonic type, drive it in and, uh, and, you, and you get your tube sound. There is a, a more comprehensive amp model version of it with some more controls, uh, with bias and some HF boost, um, a choice of odd or even harmonic uh, effect or even turning it off um, with saturation. So, you know, a bit more comprehensive if you really want to spend some time maybe with a, you know, make a dirty guitar sound and, and tune it into exactly how you need it. Um, this amp, amp model uh, tube preamp is, is really going to help you do that. Uh, in the EQ section, we have another four-band parametric EQ. The top and the bottom bands uh, can be switched between uh, bell and shell filters, and the two middle bands um, between a bell filter and an all-pass filter. An all-pass filter is quite a specialist tool. It's phase-based rather than level-based, so it lets all the level through, hence the name, all-pass, um, but uh, you are affecting phase at a given frequency. Um, often used on outputs, um, if you want to do some PA tuning work or dealing with some problem frequencies, or if you have uh, timeline issues between two microphones on the same source um, that can result in filtering and you know, comb filtering or phasing between them, this can be a useful tool for correcting those sort of those sort of problems. Don't see it on many desks, so it's quite a quite a, an uncommon feature that you know we've now brought in with our, our quantum engine. The compressor dynamic section. Uh, again, in a true Digico way, it's split into two modules. Um, so we have um, Dynamics 1, Dynamics 2. Dynamics 2, I'll do first, is our sort of standard gate ducker, very traditional Digico way of doing it. Um, but the top compressor module has some options, as you'll see. Um, and we have four sort of modeled um, compressor types um, that allow you to, you know, affect the sound differently. This may replace some external processing or plugins that you might choose to to have these type of effects which might simplify your workflow so you know these are uh, useful tools there's our classic compressor standard you know SD style compressor the one difference you'll find on all of these is they do have the mix control so if you want to do parallel style compressor and and blend between uncompressed and a compressed sound um, that yellow control on the left, the mix control, is, is useful for that. So we've got our standard SD classic compressor, uh, a vintage VCA style RMS detection compressor. Um, these, of course, you know, are loosely based on you know, vintage analog model units. Um, I'm sure it won't take much to work out which ones we're, we're sort of working with here. Um, but a VCA style uh, compressor, two more, an opto and a FET limiter. So again, these have you know very specific characteristics, and certain instruments and um, sources are gonna you know work well with some of these choices. Um, you all, I'm sure, have plenty of experience in choosing these type of things. So again, providing it natively on board on the console is is gonna be a benefit, hopefully, to all of you. So that's the mustard uh, channel processing strip, spice rack. Keeping on the condiment theme, we've had mustard, now we have spice, and part one of your spices being a chili, this is the Chili 6 um, six-band dynamic processor. Um, 
it's a, another effects rack type processor option. Um, you build them in here and then you can insert them anywhere uh, across your console. So input channels, output channels, wherever you like, you can insert um, our Chili 6 processors. If you insert, insert it across a stereo channel, it will use two of these, uh, these rack modules and tie them together. Um, so yes, it's a, a six band uh, processor. The four middle bands are split with three crossover filters and then we have two floating bands um, at the bottom and, and the top ends. Um, very similar to some other processors that you've seen out there, but again, you know, I'll keep saying it, having it on board natively might well streamline your processes um, and your setup and your workflow uh, ultimately make your, you know, your, your setup and your thing much easier to deal with. Um, a bit more information, you know, these, these flat top filters uh, that, that separate the bands. Um, the green line will dynamically move on screen and show you the way the signal is being affected. Um, you know, lots of visual feedback about how you do it and also the way you control it. You can assign these controls onto your faders on your surface. So instead of the normal touch and turn, I mean, you can use touch and turn if you like. Um, where you select a single parameter and use the, the touch and turn control just to uh, control it. But actually, if you sign it to the faders, it really does give you this sort of hands-on experience of being able to um, feel and interact with it in a, in a totally unique way. So it's actually a great thing, great thing to do. Um, and the release shape, this is actually entirely unique to Digico and, and really actually has quite a... a big effect on the way that this sounds. Um, normally uh, these type of processes have a fully exponential um, release curve and actually if you've got very fast uh, transients and fast release times it can actually sound maybe a little bit hard or aggressive and by flattening or actually inverting to a, an inverse exponential release curve I personally find it softens it out quite a lot even with you know fast, um, fast changing dynamics just having it fall off in a more gentle way with inverse exponential release um, makes actually a huge difference. Um, if you get a chance to uh, get on uh, Quantum Console and have a listen to this yourself, you really should because I think it's you know it's a it's a great feature. So that's sort of about the Quantum uh, the Quantum Engine. Of course, you know I'm standing in front of one. We've got some pretty pictures here. The Quantum Three, the first. Quantum, and quantum console we've built from the ground up just to be a quantum console. It's a very pretty desk, as you see. You know, we've got some great pictures here, and the, the design team uh, led by John have done some great work. The bigger screens, um, thousand nits of brightness. So for outdoor work, it's it's brilliant. More contrast, and actually, this sort of big um, meter bridge style hood uh, makes a big difference as well. So. Um, if you get a chance to check out both the Quantum 338 and the Quantum software features at the same time, um, I really think uh, I really think you should. So that's it from me. Uh, I hope you've you know learned something maybe. Um, as I say, you know we are here to help in this sort of troubling time as we will lock ourselves down and bypass her and you know deal with what we have to deal with. So uh, if there's things you can help with, if there are topics you'd like us to cover, we will do our best from our, our home setups to, to do this with offline software. Um, we're still producing some videos which we're going to try and get out over the coming weeks. Um, and, you know, keep talking to us. We are still open for business, still carrying on. And as soon as this lifts, you know, we'll be, we'll be right back at it. So uh, stay well and thanks for tuning in.